Hi, I'm Eileen Roach from Designs and Machine Embroidery, and I'm so excited to be here today. We have exciting news. Two new topics that I want to share with you. One is all about our software, and the other is all about the March door, because this is the last Thursday in February. So in a little while, I'm going to reveal the March door, where you can see part of it right here next to me. I know that we have some friends in Knoxville, Tennessee at a watch party with Karen Rouse at um, Mid-South Sewing. So we're excited to have the, that whole group join us. And hello, Isabella Briand from France. Nice to have you with us today. Um, if you have our inspiration software, any of our inspiration software programs, Maybe you're working in it right now and you just received a notice that there's an update available. Well, good news because now with this new change, you don't have to update all your software. You'll do just one update in one fell swoop. Hi, Patsy from Mississippi. Thanks for joining us. And um, Jay Coover is that? I had to put my glasses on. Coger, I guess. Hi, Ain from McCauleyville, Texas. Good to have you here. And Sue Brown, I'm sure you are really interested to know what's going to happen with the software. We've been kind of hinting that there'd be some big changes coming, and those changes are today. So, you know, we do have several different software programs. Um, we have Perfect Embroidery Pro, the full digitizing. We have WordArt, which is a very robust lettering system. We have uh, MyBlockPiecer, which allows you to select from over 1,500 blocks and piece them in the hoop to the size of your dreams. We also have Vintage Software, which kind of sounds funny, right? But what it does, it gives you that old school look. We use a chunky thread in there and there are over 1200 embroidery designs in there. Um, and Nancy, you're anxious for the new update. I don't blame you. You are going to just love it. So I have, uh, I just thought I would touch on some of those topics, some of those software programs that we have. So I'm going to um, just give you a little preview. We have a short video that we I wanna run so that you can see it. So hang in there and we're going to switch screens. Oh, and Gail, you're sewing another designer handbag. Oh, I'm so glad. Thank you for um, purchasing that and for making those bags. I love them too. I carry one every day. Okay, so let's go take a look at that, what you can expect from all of the Dime software. Wasn't that fun? So you can see if you're like me and have all that software and there's a new update, huh? you could be up to 15 different updates that you would have to go through. But today we are housing it all under one new platform and that is the embroidery tool shed. So let's see, Vicki, you watched the first two minutes. When is the update available? Actually, it's available right now. We just literally flipped the switch right as I came on air. So I'm going to take you into Embroidery Toolshed so that you can see exactly what you can expect. So we'll switch over to um, Embroidery Toolshed and here is my application. So, you know, it's familiar, right? Uh, it looks just like your regular software for all of you who have our software. But you'll notice now that down in the right-hand column, on the basket is where I will find all of my software. Now, if you have not purchased, say, my quilt embellisher, it will be there, but there will not be a yellow check mark. The yellow check mark means it has been purchased and activated. So I'm going to, uh, I know that you're maybe like me where you want to enjoy a traditional view. So. Perfect Embroidery Pro is where I usually live all day long. So by just left clicking on the options and making that default, that's now changed my whole screen to all of the Perfect Embroidery 
pro icons and tools that I am used to using all the time. Now, if I want to access the manual, that's right here in that little box also. And so are video tutorials, which we are building that library all the time. But this click here would take me right to YouTube uh, to our tutorial videos. Now, if I click it today in this software where we are on this broadcast, you wouldn't be able to see it. If you have a software program that um, you have not purchased, but you're interested in learning about it, well, you can try it just by right clicking uh, or left clicking and, and then selecting try. And then that will allow you to play in that software and learn its features. You won't be able to actually save a design in that software because um, you know you have to purchase it in order to do that, but you do most certainly get to play with it and experience that. You'll also notice down below, for those of you who are only Embroidery Toolshed users, well, and others, we have some very interesting font packs that are offered for you to purchase. And you can also do that right in the software. Now, I already have them loaded, so if I didn't, I would have the option to buy now, and that would take you to a website where you would select your dealer and purchase right from the software without ever leaving your house. So what does Embroidery Tool Shed do if you don't have our other software? Well, it's a very handy software that allows you to size by adding and removing stitches when you increase and decrease the size of a design. It allows you to copy and paste. You can also print templates on uh, any design. So I think you'll find lots of different reasons to use that Embroidery Toolshed software, even if you don't have our other software programs. And that is also a free download. You could, of course, also purchase fonts to use in Embroidery Toolshed. So I'm going to switch over now to PowerPoint so you can take a look at um, uh, just uh, where you would actually go download that. So if you just bear with me for a minute, I have to switch applications here and that will take just a second. And I'm gonna stop sharing. And then I'm gonna share again and select my application which is PowerPoint and share. Okay. All right. So where do you get it? Well, it's so simple. You don't even have to leave your house. You just go to www.dzgns.com. And in the search box on that main front page of dzgns.com, you put toolshed into the search box and it will take you to this page. And when you do, it, you can just download right there. And if you are a Mac user, it will have information on where to download the Mac translator. You will need to have the Mac translator installed on your computer before you install the Embroidery Toolshed. You'll find that that's the easiest way to do it. And then once you have that Mac installer translator installed, you are good to go with the Embroidery Toolshed. Both programs are free, by the way, so you don't need to um, spend any money to just get started. It's a fun way to get started. And um, thanks to everybody for joining us. There's Karen Rouse from Mid-South Sewing. I know you're all watching, we're so excited. She has a group of embroiderers in her store today in Knoxville, Tennessee, having a watch party. And they are going to stitch the, the door right after we uh, are off the broadcast. So I'm so excited for her to um, have all of her customers participate. So I know you really want to get a close-up look at that March door, right? Before we switch over there, are there any questions about the software that you'd like me to answer? Um, I know that, you know, it, to me, I know some people often say, you know, they're afraid of change with software. But, you know, you really shouldn't be because in this one, it's not really that much of a change. Everything is still going to be familiar. Um, uh, it, everything is still going to be familiar because you can go to your traditional view. But the beauty is when you update, everything is just in one place, which is great. And Carol, you have pap 
Pep, do you need another viewer to see and organize my files? Well, Perfect Stitch Viewer is the program that allows you to view images of your embroidery designs in a folder. So you do need that program. That program is not part of PEP. Mm -hmm. Okay, Judy Warren, you think it's wonderful? I know, I think it's wonderful too. And Sherry, thank you. Yeah, you're a Mac user, woohoo! We always hear from the Mac users. And uh, let's see, will it automatically update all the other software programs? Yes, once you, in, yes, once you in update whatever software program you are in, whatever inspiration software you are in, Today, you'll get a message, update available. Would you like to update? You say yes, and everything will be there. Everything will be there. And it, they will all be grouped under the Embroidery Toolshed Blanket. Uh, Melody Thomas you, Thomas, you want to know, does it work on Mac Catalina? And when it tried you a month or so ago, it did not. But yes, it does today. It does work on the new Catalina. So. Um, excuse me, you need the key, the translator key. So go follow the instructions in order to get that. And hi, Julia Banco. Yeah, she says that um, software is the great equalizer and it greatly expands your machine embroidery repertoire. I agree. I mean, I don't know how you exist without embroidery software, to be honest with you. I, I used software when I first got into the game pretty early and uh, it has really expanded my horizons and I've been able to manipulate designs to my heart's content. That's the beauty of embroidery software. It lets you um, just take total control of your designs and add, delete, merge. And of course you could digitize too, but you know, nine times out of 10, I'm not really digitizing that much. I'm manipulating beautiful designs that I have bought from professional digitizers, but there's just some part of a design that I don't want to stitch. So I take it into my software and pull it apart. Love that. Okay. Are we ready to see the dime door? Let's do it. Right? So, First, we had the January door, and that figure that had some snow and skis and a bare, you know, uh, tree without any leaves. And then Valentine's Day, February, brought us the snowy cabin with a heart shaped wreath on the front door and a fun snowman in the center. Well, March is a tribute to St. Patrick and uh, St. Patrick's Day. And um, my image is not coming over, which is a little bit of a bummer. So we'll just maybe uh, step back for a minute. But it, uh, you know, I have Irish roots. <laughs> I have, you know, everybody in my family tree is Irish. I'm related to Mulligans, O'Briens, McPeaks, Wards, Fords, you name it. And um, we have Irish blood in our family. So I'm having a little technical difficulties, but we're gonna make it work. So my door is a traditional home and any, okay, we're good now. And any of my family would most certainly have, have some hands helping. So there we go. Okay, so we just switch screens there. Oh, they're still not all showing. Yeah, there they go. Okay, so here's our March door. And the address on this March door is March 17th, which is St. Patrick's Day, right? And I hung a beautiful shamrock from the wreath. Now, if you don't celebrate, celebrate St. Patrick's Day, this is still a very elegant traditional home that you could stitch in colors of your choice, add an address of your choice and a wreath of your choice. So let's go ahead and take a look at the process. Well, before we do, we're gonna take a look at February doors. We had some um, friends send some great photographs. Carol DeGaris and is on the left and Carol Hiller on the right. Uh, I like how Carol Hiller put February on her hanging tad, tab, if you take a look up at the top. And instead of a blue sky, she chose a real wintry background with small birds flying around in that print. That's adorable, really cute. Katrina Denecker has added a, um, a snowman and she used felt for her snow. So that looks rather lifelike. I think that looks really good. You'll notice uh, once in a while, we're gonna be moving back and forth screen so that the images can catch up. 
because they're not really catching up. I'm already on the next slide, Kayla, and it's not moving there. So let's do, there we go. There's K Katharina Denecker and Sally Hurst on the right. And then our next slide shows Chris Flesher. She did both January and February and brought them in together. Oh, that's you, Carol. Well, thanks for sending in your photo. Or, you know, Kayla sometimes goes out on the web and she finds images. You know, if you save your images, hashtag Dime Door, we can find them and we can include them in the broadcast. So I, I would love to see um, all of your different doors. And Terry Freeman, you're from Pennsylvania. I spent quite a few years in Pennsylvania. So I'm so glad that you like that like these doors, then they are traditional doors that you most certainly would see all over Philadelphia, Pittsburgh, that type of area. Okay, but now it's time to do the March door. So here we go. Now, when you start any door project, the very first thing that you're going to do is make your hanging sleeves. And um, we're not really catching up there, Kayla. You're gonna make your hanging sleeves. You'll make them separately, right? And all the instructions on how to do that are in, are in the instructions, the download instructions. And um, Kayla, can you get me out of PowerPoint so you can get me back in? Okay, thank you. And then see if it comes up. There we go, okay. So your tabs are going, you're going to make your tabs first. Oh, why is it showing? Kayla, it's not showing, hon. Just bear with us a minute. There it was. Okay, now you can go back. And so you're going to make your tabs just like you did in January and February. All those instructions are included. And um, then the finishing, how to finish them, fold them in half and set them aside. Now, if we... Um, if you take a look, these are the fabrics that I chose. In, in this month's door, I, I seem to lean on uh, Moda Grunge for both the walkway and the uh, grass. And But, you know, any tone on tone, something with kind of a, a natural wash is, is great for these types of... Um, the, you know, these types of projects because it really gives a very natural look. Uh, for my door, I used a tone on tone dark, that green that was in my stash. You most certainly, I'm sure, have something like that. And the beauty is you only need like a four by seven inch piece of fabric. I bet you have lots of four by seven inch pieces of fabric in your sewing room. And of course, I provide the thread list of exquisite thread. That's the polyester 40 weight rayon that I use every day. And I just love that um, very dependable high sheen polyester thread. So the first thing you'll do is hoop piece and stitch stabilizer. Now, some people ask me, why do I use piece and stitch? Well, I like the piece and stitch because it um, once I'm done with the stitching, I can easily remove it and it pretty much dissolves, you know, like a tissue would. But um, it, it you could also use a, a um, cutaway poly mesh. I know a lot of people like to use that soft and sheer. The next um, color will be the, the texture of the door. So first you, you add the batting, stitch the outline, and then add your fabric on top for the door and stitch that texture. And then you'll want to trim that off, uh, trim it off at the bottom, leaving um, excess fabric around the outside edges so that it will be captured in the outline. Remember, you don't wanna get a blowout. That often happens in, in the hoop project. So leave extra seam allowance outside. And then the following color is the, the placement guide for the grass. So it's going to stitch um, those two little shapes. And the first thing you'll do is add applique fabric to the right side of the grass. Uh, I always make the tack down in two separate colors so that you have a, your, the embroidery foot doesn't get caught on the second one. And so it's a little slow. We're just gonna let it catch up. As you can see, she'll bring that back up. And now you'll see that just the right side door is tacked down. And then the next step would be for the left side. And followed from that is when we trim. And when we trim, we're going to trim in just inside the walkway and we'll leave the excess grass fabric to extend beyond the block outline. And then 
the very next thing that we'll, we will do is add the walkway fabric. Now, Moda has a great grunge that really resembles cement. So that's the one that I chose for my walkway. I just love that. And Vicki Watkins, you love the piece and stitch. Yeah, I love the piece and stitch too. I, you know, it's so soft. It's just great. Now, when you stitch the walkway, you're going to notice that I digitized that by hand. I really wanted to get that cobblestone look to make it look like it was, um, you know, really natural kind of an organic look. It's not a built-in texture. And I was tempted to use a fabric marker to maybe shade some of those uh, crevices between the cobblestones. I didn't do it on my final, but uh, maybe we'll see some of you who will do that. And then when you trim the walkway, you're going to trim it so that you expose the grass and yet you wanna leave the excess at the bottom of the quilt block. Cause again, we're gonna capture that in the outline of the um, block. And also the top, um, the top, I wanna say shelf, but it's step, the top step is uh, you'll leave the extensions off of that end also. Once you have the walkway trim, the next color is the outline for the door, the placement guide for the door. And then you'll lay your door fabric in place and uh, stitch number the following color, which is the tack down, trim away, and then finish with the satin edging on the door. It will also do the satin at the very top and also the door panels on the bottom. Now I chose really dark green thread, so you probably can't see those door panels. The next color that it will do is an outline for the the window itself. Now my my door, I depicted as a daytime scene. So I used a dark gray fabric for the window, which is what would appear a home to look like as you're uh, walking, you know, as you look from the outside. So you'll stitch that placement guide and then lay your fabric down, stitch the tack down, and then um, trim away the excess. The following color is a placement guide for the curtain valance. So you'll stitch that in white thread and then add your fabric and it's just a small strip of white fabric, stitch the tack down and trim that away. Once it's trimmed, okay, we might wanna catch that up. Once it's trimmed, it will stitch the satin outline on only the curtain valance. So once that's stitched, the curtain valance, oh, you're not getting caught up, are you, Kayla? What a bummer. Okay, we're having a couple difficulties here, but just bear with us. We have some options on how to fix it. So um, I wonder how many of you will actually do some, um, will do a St. Patrick's Day door or, or if you will do something else, if you will decide to um, decorate it in some other way. I can't wait to see how many different color doors we get. And um, yeah, we're, oh, here we are. Now we're ready to get over to the next color. Okay, so now you see that we have already trimmed the, <clears throat> the curtain valance. And now the next image that you see here shows all of the following elements. elements. So the window frame itself is stitched next. And then that is followed by the yellow uh, light fixtures and then the black light fixtures. I mean, the black frame on that. And so Sue Brown, you're gonna have a March sew along, or the March door sew along on Saturday. Good for you. That's over at OML Embroidery. If you wanna play along with uh, Sue and her gang, that's a great idea. Um, and then after the light fixtures are stitched, the, the uh, shrubs will stitch individually and you know they're each a separate color but it will you know jump over and do both green shrubs now i opted to um stitch my terracotta pots in a terracotta col color you most certainly could change that color it's it's the uh all terracotta and then i used a darker brown thread for the stripe that adds a little detail next up is the daffodils now the daffodils since the stems sit on the grass, I suggest you select a thread color, uh, a green that really separates, really pops 
from that grass fabric. So, you know, pay attention to your greens there because you don't want to lose your stems in the grass, right? And Patsy Wilkerson, I'm so glad you think that they've been fun. I've been having a blast with it and I'm already working on April. So, you know, of course I have to keep it under wraps, but I'm excited to finish it and get that to you. That'll be on the last Thursday of April. Okay, so what comes next? Well, the following um, color is just the lettering 317. And I made that a separate color so it would be easy for you to omit if you wanted to. Um, omit that, but I stitched it in the King Star metallic thread because it, it gives such a great finish to uh, and such a nice sheen to any embroidery design. And then the following color is the door knocker and the door handle, and also the wreath hanger, which is just like a straight satin line in the center of that window frame. So that's the following color. And Sydney Watson, you're loving these doors. I know I love the doors too. And I've already been thinking about what we're going to do in 2021, but shh, can't tell anybody. Secret. Okay. So what else comes next? Well, then we finish the, um, the shamrock, right? The, it, the, Okay, do we have sound? Do we have sound now? Don't you love technology? I know. Oh, uh, yeah, let's see. I think you're all still there. I'm hoping. Uh, thanks for the, letting us know we didn't have any sound. Yay, we have sound now. And you know, I mean, it was the battery. Huh. That's great. Oh, well, we'll do better next time, right? Okay, so where were we? Well, we were about to talk about the, um, ay, ay, ay. we were about to talk about the hanging tabs. You know, you've already prepared them, right? And when you get those instructions, you'll notice that's the very first step is to make those hanging sleeves because you'll get to a, a, a part of the embroidery project where you can't finish because that's when you have to add the sleeves. Thank you so much for telling me that you didn't have sound. We really appreciate that. And I was glad I had somebody here to help me to grab the battery, get, grab fresh batteries. So we appreciate you hanging in there and waiting for us. And Debbie, you're going to use a shamrock. Good for you. Yeah. And it, Diane LaRue, it happens, it happens everywhere. Batteries, you know, uh, sound systems go out everywhere. Okay. So let's switch over to PowerPoint and we'll show you what I like to do is I place my centering ruler on the block to find the center of the block, pretty easy to do. And then I place um, each tab in the center of a half of the block, right? Because I want to have that little space in between. Um, and that the only reason why that is there is because um, 
that's how you get you hang the block on the wire frame. And let's see, somebody wants to know, can we get the shamrock? Yvette, the, Yvette, the shamrock is included this month in in the uh, download. So it is one of the last colors of the design. So it's right in there. And where do you get the hangers? You get the hangers from the door from our website. Your local dealer may already carry it, but we do have it for sale at dzgns.com. And at least I didn't lose my real voice. Yeah, that's true. Okay, so let's see. So once we get those doors, the, the tabs in place, and I like to tape them down. Now make sure that your tape is outside of the stitch line. So that's going to be above the outline. And you're going to extend those the edges of the tabs a half inch beyond the stitch line. Uh, because that will get captured in the seam allowance. So when you're all welcome for the, the shamrock. Okay, uh, so then once it stitches that stitch line, remove the tape. You don't want that to get caught in the next step, which is when you place uh, the backing fabric right sides together over the entire block. Now, you know, be generous with how you cut this because you don't want to be so skimpy that you uh, don't capture all of that quilt block backing fabric in the in the seam. So make sure you do that. And let's see, Misha, you're going to make a hanging quilt, a hang hanging quilt. You're, well, you probably have a little typo there. Oh, and Patsy, you said, thanks for the shamrock. You have a little shamrock icon. I love that. And where do you get the rulers? Cindy West asked, where do you get the rulers? Those rulers, the target rulers, are part of our embroidery toolkit. And that is available at dzgns.com. I love those rulers. So it's just a large crosshair. It's just an extended crosshair. And it has a hole in the center for a target sticker which is very helpful when you're trying to land an embroidery design in the center of, let's say, a pocket or a quilt block. Then you can just uh, place a target sticker right in that hole and use that target sticker to align your needle when you're in the hoop. Target stickers also come in the embroidery toolkit and instructions for using that product are in there also. So uh, everything you need to know would be there. So here is my final door. Um, Kayla will switch over in a second so you can see a, a close-up look of how that, there it is, how it worked out for me. And oh, I'm just tickled with it. I think it's so cute. I love the diamond pattern on the wall. Um, I think that looks like some very elegant, um, a very elegant brickwork. And Sharon, you want to know, is the shamrock temporarily attached? No, it is not temporarily attached. It is stitched right onto the door, but you could most certainly stitch just the shamrock. Now, how would you do that? Well, you would need software. And if you don't have software, you can use Embroidery Toolshed to do that task. You would just open the door, this whole door on the Embroidery Toolshed, go into the color sequences and select just the shamrock element, so that would be the inner light green shamrock and the outer dark green shamrock. Select it, copy, paste it into a new file and save that as a standalone design. Now, I, it's not a lace design, so I would suggest stitching it on a layer of tool, you know, bridal like illusion tool and a layer of water soluble mesh stabilizer. And then after embroidery, rinse away that water soluble, soluble mesh stabilizer and trim the tool as close to the shamrock as you can. And then you can just tack the shamrock onto the door or you could use it for other applications. So you see, that's why you need software. I mean, I don't know how you embroider without it. Yes, I know you can do a lot at the machine, but man, I'd much rather have a mouse, a keyboard and a screen so that I can control everything I want. What I want to do with the machine is so I don't want to play on that screen. So let's see, will Windows 7 support the update? Will Windows 7 support the update? No, no. sorry, it won't. I have my software wizard here in case I needed to know that. And uh, unfortunately it does not. It, we support through what? Windows 8. Windows 8. 
Windows above. and above. At some point, you know, in order to keep the technology up to date, just like Microsoft, we have to um, allow some other some other platforms to um, not be a part of the update. So let's see. Uh, yeah, Elena, you agree about software. You definitely need software if you're going to um, be serious about machine embroidery. It's awful fun. So how else can you personalize the door? Well, let's take a look. Um, before we take a look at that, uh, I found some cute little dogs over at Embroidery Library. They always have adorable pro uh, embroidery designs over there. So I went into my Perfect Embroidery Pro and I selected one dog and I resized him and copy pasted. So I have three of that larger dog. And then I also have a uh, smaller dog. And now with the new update today, you can um, add a crosshair to each element on a page. So you would just select that element, that dog, and right click, select utility and add crosshair. And when you do, you have a crosshair just on that dog. And I could then do that for all four dogs. And so why is this so important? Well, this is really important to me. This is something that uh, all the Dime educators have been asking for and I have requested from our software development team so that um, when we use our print and stitch target paper, which can be kind of pricey, we don't have to waste a whole sheet for one tiny design. So when you're in Perfect Embroidery Pro, um, you use that feature and then in the print settings, you make sure there's a check mark in artworks and then make sure that the check mark in crosshair is removed because that check mark adds just one very large crosshair to the whole page. And I want a crosshair on each individual design. And then that allows me to use this print and stick target paper and be conservative, you know, and, and save. So here is my printout. I actually only printed three of the dogs. And then I cut them out paper doll, doll style and place them right on the door. So you can see that the small dog, in my opinion, is a little too small, but that other size dog is just right. So if I wanted to add that, I could do that right now. So Kathy Brunson said, could you explain the Embroidery Toolshed software? Sure. In fact, we could go uh, take a look at Embroidery Toolshed software. Yeah, no, the upgrade is for every embroidery software program by Inspired by Dime. So all inspirations are um, software programs are getting this update today. And it, so it is not just for PEP. Now, the crosshair feature is only in PEP because that's, you know, our full-blown digitizing software, but you will find all of your software will now be housed in, um, in one ex executable launch and one platform. So instead of having to upgrade all these different individual programs, now you'll just do it in one fell sweep. Betty, you want to know what are the dimensions of the cute hanger for the door? Well, the, the hanger um, is six by 10, and that's the size of the block. So the opening is six by 10. I'm not quite sure how tall this really is. I would estimate about 14 inches, I guess. Um, but it's cute, isn't it? Yeah. And so the same, it's the same um, wireframe that we use for every month and uh, it's working out just fine. So let's see, the embroidery tool shed, shop, the embroidery tool shed software, sorry, is a, is a easy to use, very user-friendly software program that allows you to open a design resize a design by adding and removing stitches. It allows you to copy and paste, change colors of a design, and print a template of the design. So those are the main functions that most embroiderers who have no em embroidery software experience, they're the functions that they would like to do in software. So we have pr are providing that program 
for free so that you can get your feet wet, kind of familiar with software so that you know how to use it. So that's really the main gist of embroidery embroidery tool shed software. But the beauty is that when you're in embroidery tool shed, you will see all the other software programs that are available. You could even purchase them if you'd like by clicking uh, purchase, and then it would take you to the website to download that. You would select your dealer so that you can leave your dealer um, and let, you know, let, leave them in the equation. And then once you download it, you're ready to install with your activation code that you would get in the email with your purchase and you'd be ready to stitch. So this was super fun. I really enjoyed the March um, door and I'm looking forward to working on April and I can't wait to see what all of you are going to do with your March door. I know we, in January and February, we saw so many of you who added pets um, to the front door, kitty cats and, and dogs. Some people added squirrels to the rooftops and we had some cardinals. Uh, some people added skis and some people didn't, um, didn't add the skis. And then uh, one of our embroidery friends mirror imaged the design, the one that the January that had a door and mirror imaged it, stitched them together. And it looked like, you know, a, a row houses in Chicago brownstones or Philadelphia row houses. I thought that was adorable. So I really appreciate you sharing your afternoon with me today. And we're looking forward to next week. I'm going to have a special guest next week. His name is, um, well, I'm not going to tell you his name. It's a secret, but he's going to come. He's going to be live with me at one o'clock and uh, we're going to share some great ideas for embroidery. And so we hope to see you soon. And remember, when you stitch your door, make sure you tag it, hashtag Dime Door, so we can find it online and we can include it in our presentation. We love sharing your projects. And I hope all you folks out at Mid-South Mid Sewing in Knoxville are, in, are having a blast with Karen Rouse. I know it's a great store, lots of creativity and inspiration in that store. Thanks for joining us. Have a great day.